something about Mr. Thomas Carney. There's an old African proverb that originated in Nigeria that states it takes a village to raise a child. This phrase has become an idiom in today's culture that can refer to many situations. We can modify that verb, that proverb today, that it takes a village, a county, a state, and dedicated people like Betty Seymour and others involved with this project since 2017, researching Mr. Carney's life, military service, applying for grants from the Maryland Historic Trust, selecting the location of the marker, which was ultimately approved by the county commissioners and parks recreation, Department and the State Highway Department, and we've all endured the COVID-19 pandemic and other delays, and now here we are at last. Well, I just so you know, I was in charge of the weather, but it is a nice day. I'm just so it wasn't sunny when we came to put the chairs out, so I'm sorry. Um, Thomas Carney descends from one of two Irish Carney brothers who came to Virginia in the 1600s. His maternal line is from one of their slave women. By the early 1700s, the Carney family moved to Delaware where Thomas was born around 1754 as a free man and who had white brothers. Eventually, the family moved to Caroline County where they took up farming. In later years, Mr. Carney was described as a light-skinned colored man of a common size and great strength. In his obituary in 1828, he was described as friendly with a cordial personality to blacks and whites alike. In 1777, Mr. Carney served in the Maryland's 5th Regiment of George Washington's Continental Army as a private and at some point during his service was promoted as a corporal. And at that time, there were not that many African-American corporals. I believe I read it, there were only four at that time. Um, he uh, just missed the Battle of Germantown, Pennsylvania in September 1777, uh, but then spent the winter of 1777 in Valley Forge with the Continental Army. In the spring of 1778, Carney enlisted in the Continental Line, and in June, he signed a long-term enlistment with the 7th Maryland Regiment. As the focus of the war turned towards the southern states, in early 1780, General Washington detached brigades of the Maryland Line and sent them to Elk Creek in northern Maryland. The brigades then boarded several dozen vessels and disembarked in Petersburg, Virginia. They marched to North Central Carolina and on to South Carolina, where they fought in the Battle of Camden, where Carney was described as first to fight with unshakable courage and three convincing bayonet charges. And at the Battle of Guilford Courthouse, under the command of General Nathaniel Green, Carney reportedly boasted of using a bayonet to kill seven enemy soldiers. Uh, his other battles included Hobbs Creek Hill and the Battle of Fort 96 in June of 1781. All are in South Carolina and were under the leadership of Nathaniel Green. And as mentioned earlier, um, it was during the Battle of Fort 96 that Mr. Carney served with Captain Benson from Talbot County. I believe he was with him all a longer time, but he, this is where his heroism occurred. Um, uh, uh, Perry Benson suffered a severe wound to his arm. The commanding officer of the regiment ordered Mr. Carney to get Captain Benson to the medical tent as soon as possible. In the cooling, sweltering heat and humid weather that June day, Mr. Carney personally carried Captain Benson, who was of great bulk, on his shoulders for some distance, reaching the doctors and fainted in sheer exhaustion. Mr. Carney proved his loyalty to Benson by staying with him while he was receiving medical attention. Carney went on to fight at Etah Springs, perhaps the bloodiest battle fought in the South. 
And after the war, Benson and Carney returned home and forged a lifelong friendship. Whenever Benson was home at his uh, property at the Wheatlands on the Miles River in Easton, he sometimes traveled to Denton and made a point to visit Mr. Carney. Captain Benson was later promoted to general and was instrumental in getting a war pension from the state of Maryland and the federal government for Mr. Carney, as well as helping the Carney family lease 50 acres of farmland in Denton. When the Battle of St. Michael's, Maryland occurred during the War of 1812, then Brigadier General Benson and Carney were reunited in battle to save the town from the British. They continued their 40 plus year friendship up to Benson's death in 1827. Mr. Carney died in 1828 at 74 years old on his farm in Denton and is probably buried there. We have not been able to locate his uh, grave site. Um, so we place this marker today on the county courthouse green as a tribute to his life for his service in both wars to ensure the United States of America remained free for centuries to come. And lastly, it does take a village, town, community, nation, and dedicated citizens to remember and honor our country's history and remember Mr. Carney and others who've served our country and to those who continue to serve for our future generations. Mr. Carney, we salute you. Uh, we would like to invite uh, Larry Porter 